as a pediatric infectious disease um, physician, that really what we're dealing with with children under five is almost that we're back to where we were in March of 2020 to try to protect them. Because this variant is so transmissible, uh, even people that are, um, uh, you know, not only um, have received two doses of the vaccine, but also with their boost, still seem to be relatively easily infected. Uh, the importance of the vaccine is that it's keeping those people out of the hospital and out of having severe illness, but they're still getting infected and then can clearly uh, um, transmit to their, to their young children. The reason this is hard is because I think right around, just before we first heard Omicron, there was a sense that we were finally going to get out of the woods, right? And I, I, I mean, I, I can speak for myself and my own family. Leading up to Thanksgiving, there was the sense that while we were not going all the way back to normal, there was a sense that if you were vaccinated, especially if you'd gotten boosted, that you could start interacting in a more normal fashion the way we did pre-pandemic. And I think Omicron is showing us that we really can't when you're concerned about an unvaccinated person in your midst. And as you point out, for right now, children under five are not eligible for vaccination and won't be, unfortunately, for quite some time. I would make sure that the child is surrounded by people that are fully vaccinated, including boosted, uh, if, they're, if people are eligible. Because what you want to do is kind of cocoon the child around with as much protection as possible. And again, people will say, well, what, what, Matt, why does it matter if you tell me that it's a breakthrough infection? Well, I also know that children need their parents and their grandparents and their other loved ones around. And even if the breakthrough infection occurs, that booster shot is going to prevent that person from having to go to the hospital and be hospitalized and potentially have severe illness and die, right? So I do think that as much as possible, every single person that that child under five comes in contact with, we would want to really try to make sure that they are um, vaccinated, including, including boosted. I think now, otherwise, it really is back to kind of what we were talking about at the beginning, which is you really limit the number of people that you're exposing the child to because every exposure raises the risk of, of transmission. And so you really want to keep it to be a relatively small group and that that group is not also mixing with lots and lots of other people. You know, we used to talk about having them in a pod, right? You know, I think as much as possible having only, you know, really limiting the, the people around the child should limit the number of people that they themselves are also exposed to, because with each exposure, there's a risk of bringing that vaccine into, I mean, the, the virus uh, to the child. I think the other is certainly uh, under five, but above the age of two, that if, if the child is going to be around people where you don't know what their exposures are, you don't know what their vaccination status is, that they should be masking. We tend not to try to mask children to and under just because it can be quite hard to maintain compliance. And then depending on how young the child is, there could be issues about choking risk and things like that too. But certainly between two and five, when they're out and about as much as possible in an indoor setting to, be, to have a mask on. I think even in the outdoor settings though, if it's going to be a crowded area, again, where you're not going to be able to guarantee that six foot distance. And frankly, we don't know with Omicron yet whether six feet is enough. You know, again, this greater transmissibility, I think that, you know, to, to as much as possible err on the side of having that, that mask on uh, to, to help protect the child, but that also anyone around the child you know, adult and, and older children should also be masked as well. We know even before the pandemic, right? Preschools are where children go to exchange viruses, right? I mean, it, it, that's just what happens there. Um, and it's, you know, and with this Omicron, it's going to happen. And so I think just recognizing as much as possible that when you're sending your child to preschool or daycare, that it, that's always been a risk is exposure to, to viruses. And that doesn't change here with, with Omicron. As much as possible, I would strongly encourage people to do what they should have been doing anyway, we all should be doing anyway, which is when our child shows any sort of symptoms, try to keep them at home, you know, but we all know, right? A little bit of sniffling, parents have busy work that they have to get to, it's very easy then to still take your child to daycare. But I think as much as possible, 
any sort of symptom that they're showing that they should that they should try to keep them at home. I think the other issue too with with coronavirus infection, this the SARS-CoV-2, is that it seems to cause a wide range of viral-like illnesses, right? So there are some kids that seem to have it be primarily like a stomach bug. You know, they're having nausea or vomiting or diarrhea or some combination. And you think, oh, that's a stomach bug. Now, again, I would still say that child should not be going to daycare, even if it's not coronavirus. But for that kind of child, I would still have them get tested for coronavirus because we are seeing children that have primarily a gastrointestinal illness that still turn out to be SARS-CoV-2 infection. Well, as a, as a pediatrician, I'm going to say you know, the, the, the group that I'm most, most worried about are our children. You know, when you think about, you know, for an old guy like me, a couple of years sitting in my, you know, attic, uh, working away, you know, I, I'm probably going to be okay. But you know, you take someone who's eight years old, and it means 25% of their life at this point has been under this pandemic. And I will say something that may may be a bit provocative, but I actually think it's, it, I, I really believe strongly in it. Uh, and there was a piece in the New York Times earlier this week uh, about this, that this is a human rights and humanitarian issue for us as a society. We are basically, in my mind, favoring unvaccinated adults over our children. And because we've, as adults have allowed people to be unvaccinated, to be out and about in society, that that's a, that, that we, you know, we, that that's allowed. And we've then had to lock down our children. We've had to have them have virtual school. You know, now we finally got them back, but now all these schools, I know even around Montgomery County are, are, are now going virtual again. So the children are suffering. And as I say, you know, as a percentage of their lifetimes, this is massive, you know, really, really, really massive.